Coming down with our J Concepts Pit Report with Scotty Ernst and Jason Rona. All right, thank you very much, Charlie. We're here on the J Concepts Pit Report with Mr. J Concept, Jason Rona. And Jason, it's been a, a long week for you already for everybody here because we've had so much practice and so much uh, testing here leading up to this day of qualifying. Now that qualifying's begin, how are your boys sitting? Well, Ryan's doing well. You know, he started off the uh, first round there with a second. Um, he's in the third heat. He ran a really good run, no crashes, no mistakes. Um, he was slightly conservative. You know, he wasn't going for it. He ran, uh, you know, a 10-10, you know, uh, which put him in second. Uh, the second round there, he was a little bit uh, slower than he was the first round. He got a 13, a 10-13, which is probably going to make him sixth or seventh for the round, I believe. You know, we're still running the round here, of course, but, you know, more than likely a sixth or seventh. So, he's, you know, he's actually pretty happy, you know. I mean, there's a lot of people that would like to have those finishes, and, you know, he's a couple runs away from locking in a good position in the semi, and that's what it's all about. Absolutely. It is all about the semi. Everybody wants to be the fastest and things like that, but would you just have to make it to the semi and then move on from there? Yeah, I mean, this is, race is so difficult. You know, it's so long, and then you add all the practice that we've had, uh, keeping the drivers uh, focused and being, you know, having the concentration on point every race is tough. And, you know, it's that's the thing that, you know, uh, I think Ryan realizes after being at so many worlds is he's trying to improve out there, and he's trying to keep his head on straight and trying to maintain consistent runs so you don't put yourself in a corner um, where you have to run good and you have a lot of pressure. So um, I think I think he's meeting some of his goals right now. Well, let's stay on talking about Ryan. Obviously a huge change for Shock the Industry when he went from Team Minnesota to the TLR. You're uh, one of his closest friends and, you know, companies that, that back him so much. It was uh, a big move for him, something that took a lot of courage, I'm sure, but uh, it's put him in a new mindset and kind of reinvigorated him. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think a, a lot of people, I mean, when you do this for a long time, um, you're always looking for extra motivation. And uh, I think it, it's, it's helped his motivation a little bit in terms of, uh, you know, kind of wanting to prove to some people that he can do it with either platform. Uh, he's already done that. Uh, I mean, first round of qualifying at the Worlds, you get a second uh, with a new car. So I mean, obviously you're showing people that what you can do. Um, you know, he's always um, won a lot of races. He's always been fast. Uh, and he'll be fast with either vehicle. Um, you know, they're, they're missing him over at the Associated Pits for sure. Um, it, it is a little bit, I'm not going to say awkward, but it, it's a little sad sometimes because he, you miss that, uh, that um, you know, that triple threat there of uh, Brent, Cavallari, Mayfield. Uh, now we got Cody over here wrenching for Cavallari. So yeah, that part's a little bit sad, you know, because... Um, uh, that was such a big, a big uh, statement there for a while, the Ryan and Ryan show, right? So, um, you know, that, that, that's missing a little bit over there, I think. So, um, but Pudge is running well, too, um, you know, with the new associated car. Um, and I think, I think Ryan's watching them, and there's a little competition going on between all of them, I th oh, sure. I'm sure. And, um, you know, Ryan wants to be ahead of those guys when it's all said and done. And, um, but you never know. It threw me for a lose when he came in and he came in for a pit stop. I uh, said so we were following a car into the pit stop and Jared Blodger picks it up and I, I said to Charlie, who's that? Oh my God, it's Ryan. So it caught me for a loop. Let's talk about the tires. Obviously leading it up to this, you know, a lot on the line. You try to uh, be uh, innovative and come up with something new and you have four new tread patterns that you brought here to World Championship. Tell us a little bit about them. Well, um, you know, something that we wanted to do is we had a lot of requests from our uh, drivers in 8 scale for some treads to kind of fill in the, um, some space that we have in the line. Uh, we needed something um, such as this reflex tire here that uh, we're going to talk about. Uh, but, you know, not only for here, but for uh, at every track for 8 scale. And, you know, this is something that, you know, uh, it's got about a, a size of the pin is roughly close to our double Ds, our type tire. Uh, what we've done here is we've arranged them in a stacking type configuration, which, you know, has become popular in 8 scale because it's a, it helps wear. Um, then you get good rotation with the tire. We've added some center bars here that uh, also help with wear and kind of the stability. Uh, so this is something that I think is going to work well in almost all the compounds we we have. Um, you know, we talked about earlier. You know, we got the black compound, we got the green compound, blue, yellow, red. You know, we got tons of compounds. Uh, they all have their purpose. And here we're on the harder stuff. But I think this is a tire that's actually going to excel when we have to run the softer compounds the greens and so forth and I think 
um, that's where people are really going to uh, like this tire. The track's a little wet, a little loamy. Uh, you know, I'm thinking uh, Nitro Challenge. I'm thinking of, like, JBRLs. Um, you, know, t you know, tracks like that. Uh, that's where people are really going to like this tire. And it's actually working good here as well. We got John McGinty using this on the track. So uh, it's 12 to 15 minute tire on concrete or whatever we're calling yeah. the surface <laughs> here. Um, and i um, been really happy with it. Uh, kind of moving on, uh, we got this Chasers tire, which this is something that we have worked on, uh, you know, for most of the year here and there, just uh, working on the designs. Uh, what we wanted was something that was similar in uh, performance to our crossbow tire. Uh, that was kind of one of Ryan's favorites all the time is the crossbow. Uh, he loves that tire. Uh, what we wanted to do here is go a little lower on pin height, uh, close, um, make them a little closer together, uh, work with the wear, help with some of the wearing characteristics. We want a little sharper performing tire. And then what we wanted to do here was do a little overlapping in the center of the tread so it actually helps the wear long long term you know when you're in a longer main a longer race this is something that i think a lot of people are going to want to have um you know in their arsenal because it's going to be so versatile this is that uh that tire that you reach for when you don't know what to do uh, or maybe running a main um you know again all the compounds but i think the most popular will be blue and green for sure uh, here we're on the harder stuff but you know other than that uh that's that one uh, we'll move on here to the Remix tire, which is kind of a, an offshoot of our Metrics tire that we debuted in uh, Argentina. Ryan got fifth there in Argentina with our uh, Metrics tire, which we made a very tall lug that were stacked. Uh, what we want to do here is use the same uh, bar configuration on the sidewall, which is uh, like the Metrics. It's like our barcodes. You know, it's got that uh, crisscross, zigzag type pattern, uh, which is so popular in 10 scale. We added that here to an 8 scale tire, and we've added a little uh, mid-size, beefier lug in the center. Again, we did some overlapping, uh, like we talked about earlier, in the center. And uh, this has worked really well. I think people um, on our red clay tracks, like on the East Coast, uh, this is something you'll run on the Blue Groove. Um, that you want to run a qualifier, it's going to wear pretty well, it's going to be fast. Um, so this tire is going to work well. John McGinty's ran it here this weekend. Ryan hasn't tried it. Uh, but John ran it, and he liked the yellow compound in the remix. So something to fill in some of the blanks that we have in our 8-scale lineup. Uh, you know, people ask all the time, um, you know, hey, are you going to make any more 8-scale tires? And, you know, it's like, well, actually, we probably make more 8-scale tires than we make 10-scale tires. But, um, you know, the only certain ones I always get the coverage, the press, whatever, everyone's favorites. But, you know, we got four new ones here. Uh, kind of finishing with the, the Diamond Bar tire. Uh, this is the tire that Ryan's running here uh, so far this weekend. This is uh, our tire that we kind of took a shot at, uh, something I've been wanting to experiment with uh, probably since 2008, uh, a tire that um, kind of when you get down to it, it's more like a treaded tire, and it's something that um, you know we might see more in the future in, in this type of racing where we're racing on a surface like this. And, you know, this is a stepped type pin in a diamond configuration horizontal but they're also angular and they're kind of pyramid shaped so as they wear they actually get a little closer together and they wear like exponentially less as time goes on so Ryan's got you know so far he's got about 30 minutes on some of these still showing tread still in good shape uh, which kind of shows that you know you're running uh, great competitive lap times you know second for the round six for the round um, still 30 minute uh, they look good, so we're hoping that this is a tire we could run in a semifinal or a main main event. Um, so it really looks cool. People are giving us a lot of input on it. They really like it. And um, but you know that's a, a, it's a specific kind of tire for this kind of track. Um, and we haven't really tried it many other conditions so far. But I do assume that in the greens and the blacks and the blue compound, they'll work pretty well on some other conditions. So. You know, that's kind of our four tires here that have been really successful. Um, we're kind of anxious to get those out. We got the, the Dirt Tech inserts, the gray inserts that are going to come with these. People have been asking us for a while when we're going to update our inserts. So, you know, everything's going to be updated and a uh, really nice 8-scale line. Well, you've obviously been very, very busy making all this preparing for the World Championships. And if we look at the, the history of J-Concept, Italy's been good to you. You know, the last time... Uh, 
you were here you got your first world championship title when you, you in your early days of john j concepts and tell us you know just a uh, quick what did, what that all means to you well i mean that was really really big um you know at the time we were in a really good position uh, associated didn't make a four-wheel drive off-road buggy uh, we kind of came in at the right time and we were able to design and develop a car that used a lot of their parts. Uh, at the same time, we were able to use uh, a great uh, fleet of drivers that they had. Um, you know, Brent and Cliff and the guys that associated said, hey, we need to run four-wheel drive. This car makes sense for us to run. It has a lot of associated parts. So we had Cavallari, Mayfield, Tebow, um, you know, a lot of those guys at that time. So we went to Italy really stacked in those days and we had it really good uh, because of the unique situation that we were in uh, going there with probably you know three of the best drivers there um, and Mayfield TQ Cavallari ended up winning and Mayfield got third and that was um, you know probably our most exciting moment when we started as a company uh, because it was something that you were hoping that could happen but you you didn't really know if it was going to be possible um, but at that particular time, you know, it was really exciting, and uh, the Ryans were so young then, and Tebow, they're about 18, and, you know, there's good memories. Um, those guys are still on top of their games today, running well, um, and, you know, that's almost 10 years ago now, and um, they're, they were amazing back then, and they're still getting it done today. So uh, good times. Uh, you know, things have changed. A lot of guys are on different teams now. Um, you know, the industry's changed. Um, you know, their AKA came along in about uh, 2007, 2008. You know, back then, you know, they weren't around. So, you know, now it's it's us, Proline, AKA, and you know, we got others, Pro Circuit, we got Sweep, we got a lot of competition that we didn't used to have. And you know, we're improving our stuff all the time, but other people are as well. So, um, you know, we want to uh, continue to make a name for ourselves. You know, we realize the situation that we're in in the industry where uh, we've been doing this a little over 10 years. Uh, the pro lines are 30 years plus, um, you know, AKA is young like we are. So um, we, we, we want to, to get those guys, you know, on the track and off of the track, but it takes time and they, they make a good product, but we're, we're making a good product too. And I think they see that. Um, and, um, and that's, and that's kind of where we're at. Well, appreciate you taking the time here, and uh, thank you for all your support of the J Concepts Pit Cam and all that. We figured it was only right to give you a little time, so good luck this weekend. All right, thanks, Scotty. All right, thank you very much. So there's a few words with Jason Rono, owner, the man behind J Concept. A little look at the past, the here and now, and the future with their new line of eight-scale tires. Right now they're in a good place here at the World Championship. We'll see how it plays out. Back to you, Charlie, in the TLR Broadcast Center. Thanks a lot, Scotty. That was some in-depth looks at a lot of the uh, Jay Concepts nests of it all and uh, good stories there. Two rounds today, three starts tomorrow. We start tomorrow on race number six, so the fast guys won't be up until the end. Wow.